Do you have an iPhone 7 that'll say no service, even if you're in a service area and friends of yours with the same phone and the same carrier have service? This seems to be a very common issue with the iPhone 7. What winds up occurring is that the baseband CPU that's responsible for you getting service will wind up shorting to ground, and as a result of it, the rest of the phone will work, but you won't get service. This seems to only be occurring in Qualcomm-based phones rather than Intel-based phones. If you have a Qualcomm chipset, that chipset will short to ground, and you won't get service anymore. There are several theories as to why this is the case. Some people think that the Qualcomm chipset is just worse than the Intel chipset and just fails at a higher rate. Other people think that since the Qualcomm Power IC is differently shaped and differently placed than the Intel IC, that it's closer to a section of the phone that winds up flexing, and when it flexes, it spends spikes of power over to the baseband CPU, which winds up killing it. Regardless of which of these theories winds up being correct, it is clear that these defects that plague the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are carrying their way over into the 7. The iPhone 6 and 6 Plus had issues where they would flex, and as a result of it, the Touch IC would come off the board and you wouldn't have Touch. About a year later, they fixed it by releasing the iPhone 6S, which didn't flex anymore, but, but they would randomly shut down. But wait, they fixed that with the iPhone 7 where nothing would fail, but oh wait, they randomly get no service. I'm really conflicted here on how to feel, seriously. On one hand, yet again, Apple has proven that they cannot engineer a reliable device. On the other hand, they're actually taking accountability and responsibility for it before getting sued, which is actually new for them. Typically, they have to get sued or have some sort of class action lawsuit filed, or you get a lot of negative PR before they cover this type of issue. Yet here, they're covering the issue, and they're replacing phones with the issue before they get called out on it which I think is actually worth a round of applause. So good job, Apple, for doing that. Clearly, you haven't learned how to engineer a phone that's half as durable as a Moto G that costs one-fourth what this thing costs. However, at the same time, they're at least willing to admit we haven't learned how to engineer a proper phone yet, so we're going to replace them if they have issues, which is a step in the right direction. You, you, know, you, you haven't fixed the fact that you're an alcoholic, but you're going to the AA meetings. Good on you. Now, the one thing about this that sucks, the one thing about this that I think still kind of sucks is that with the iPhone 7, they don't just have issues with baseband. They also have issues very similar to the iPhone 6 Plus, where the audio IC will have solder heads under it that wind up coming off of the board. When this happens, the phone will still work, but your voice memos and stuff like that are not going to work properly. And that's, that's a small flaw. Who really cares about the voice memo feature? The real issue here is when you wind up power cycling the phone, when you fully power it down and power it back up, if you have that problem, and then the phone wants to talk to the audio IC and it can't, and it boot loops. Because when it boot loops, you have no access to your data, and the phone is completely dead. The boot looping issue may be completely related to the same thing that causes the Qualcomm phones to randomly short their baseband CPU to ground. And if that's the case, you could go to the Apple Store with a flexion-based defect that causes no service, and they replace the phone. However, if you have the audio IC-based defect that's caused from the same flexion-based damage, they'll give you the middle finger and say, spend money on a new one. So it's not a full 180 to supporting their customers, but still, it is some progress. You're still an alcoholic, but good on you for making it to the AA meeting. I would still like to see Apple get to a point where they can engineer a phone at $800 or $700, that is a match for a Moto G at $179 when it comes to durability. I still understand entirely why it is people choose to buy iPhones. They like the fact that iMessage integrates very, very well with their desktop OS. They like the ecosystem. Like they like the applications available for it. They like the form factor. I understand and respect why it is people want to use an iPhone. And it's because of that that I really wish they would decide to just put a teeny tiny bit of effort in looking into what their competitors are doing to start creating some decent hardware to go around that ecosystem that people so love so that they don't have to wind up watching videos like this after Googling, why is it my iPhone 7 has no service six months after I bought it? Because that really sucks. Do you think it's a good thing that Apple decided we're going to take responsibility and accountability for the devices that we failed to engineer properly? Or do you think it's a bad thing that being a $900 billion company that they're failing at these things in the first place? It's interesting because in one of the past videos I said, I can't believe that as a $400 billion company, they're still messing these things up. A $400 billion company should be able to afford to engineer a device that doesn't fail this way. And somebody in the comments said, You dumb Apple hater, they're not a $400 billion company, they're a $900 billion company. You gotta get your facts straight, moron. And I'm just sitting here laughing. <laughs> I mean, you are, okay, so they're worth twice as much as I said they're worth. How does that minimize my point? Okay, 
So I was saying they're a $400 billion company. They should really be able to learn how to engineer a phone that doesn't fail. Now you're saying they're a $900 billion company. Yeah, that makes it a lot better that every year they engineer a phone that has random defects and, and dies, doesn't it? Logic. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.